Hey guys, uh, good morning. It's Wednesday. We're going to do our live video today. Not right now, of course. We're going to do live video, giving away our free parts. Again, we do that once a week. It's 80 to 150 bucks worth of parts. Um, and basically, you watch till the end. We'll give you a code, and then you can hop online and get a discount, free parts, whatever. So you have to be subscribed, okay? And you also have to click the notifications button um, down below. So if you don't select notifications, you won't be alerted to the live video. But um, today, I just want to talk about if you're looking to modify a bike, a scooter, looking to get into it, have fun, you have buddies doing it or family or whatever, you see it online and you want to do it, kind of give you some guidance on what bike to choose, what's going to be best fit, um, the differences and kind of the most commonly modified bikes. So I'm going to split it up in two stroke and four stroke, okay? So a lot of bikes modified are two stroke, a lot of bikes are four stroke. So <clears throat> keep that in mind, they're two totally separate motors with advantages and disadvantages. I'm also gonna I'm also gonna talk about um, the first off stressing the importance of when you buy a bike, make sure it's a bike that can be modified. If you want to modify it, you don't want to start with something that's like trying to reinvent the wheel um, because you're just gonna run into roadblocks and, and have a bunch of problems. Um, the other thing I want to point out is not always about CC. For instance, if you buy a, a 50cc Yamaha Zuma. Um, it has far more parts and potential for speed than compared to like a Honda Aero 80 um, <clears throat> or an Aero 125, something that doesn't have parts availability. So keep in mind that it's not always about CC with two stroke, four stroke. It is really, realistically. So, um, this is, so since we split it up in two stroke versus four stroke, um, I, I, the most commonly modified four stroke is gonna be your Honda Grom, uh, your Zuma 125, and your GY6 motors. The GY6 motor is kind of what people get into to start. They're really cheap. Um, however, uh, they're Chinese. Uh, they're Chinese motors, and they're not going to give you really reliability. If you really take care of them and you maintain them and whatnot, you don't go too far in the build spectrum. You don't go crazy, crazy high compression, high CC. You're probably going to be fine. Like if you get a 150 GY6, you do a 171 NCY big bore kit and keep it kind of more mild. You, you'll you'll be fine for the most part but in general the reliability and quality is not quite there as compared to like a honda yamaha something like that so um, i'm going to show you a couple like just what a gy6 bike looks like um and we'll start with like a gy650 uh if people want to kind of get in and have fun and they and, you know they're really budget oriented um maybe they don't want to spend much money on it uh they they want to learn and kind of tinker with something that's a good starting bike um, just because you can get them for just about free if you get a you can find a one that you know on Craigslist for two or three hundred bucks probably just to learn and tinker with so um, Not really my choice of bikes per se. I like the two strokes I like the Honda's and Yamaha's because you can pull one out of a you know pile of, of Vines next to a, a barn and do a carb clean change a jet and it works perfect I've had I had a Zuma that had a about half a gallon worth of oil and water in the engine and it was sitting for 15 years outside I tipped it over cranked it dumped all this nasty stuff out of it um, and then did fresh fuel carb clean a spark plug started right up and it's been running perfect to this day so that's nice about the the Hondas and Yamahas and the Japanese and the Piaggio the more quality bikes you can find one that's 15 years old and it may run like it's brand new with the Chinese bike if you find one's been neglected um, it's really not worth the time to put into it because your hoses wear faster your brake line your throttle cable all that stuff is lower quality and doesn't hold up um, the plastic really dries out so there's there's pros and cons to all these bikes but um, we'll start with the GY6 okay so for instance uh, there's GY6s, they have tons of crazy model names and, and, and whatever, so don't get hung up on that. Just just focus on the motor. So GY6 49cc um, is going to be a bottom mount. That's a bottom mount motor, okay? And it's going to be in something like this. This is a um, this is a Bentelli Sprint, and it's just a four-stroke 49cc GY6. These motors actually do surprisingly well with like an 88cc NCY big bore kit and a pipe and whatnot. They'll do... 50, 55, somewhere in there with about five, 600 bucks worth of parts. Um, so that's, that's that kind of with these in a nutshell. Um, the good learner bikes are never going to be fast, fast, fast. They're cheap. And if you want something and you're kind of learning and you don't want to destroy like a nicer, newer bike or whatever, and you just want something cheap to get in and have fun, this will work. Okay. That being said, don't expect a ton of reliability. Um, 
if don't expect I shouldn't say that, but if you don't take care of them and if you're not really on top of it, don't expect a ton of um, uh, reliability as compared to a Honda, Yamaha, whatnot. But that being said, if you wanna buy a brand new bike, you can get one of these for 15, you know, anywhere from 12 to 1600 bucks for GY6, you know, GY6 Chinese 49cc, where you're gonna go get a Honda, Yamaha, you're gonna spend 2,500 plus. So if you wanna spend that type of money, get a Honda, Yamaha, get a new bike. If you can't justify it, it doesn't make sense to you, whatever, then this is kind of your next best bet if you want a new bike. So, um, that's a that's a uh, 49cc GY6. I think we have a 150 over here, and some of these are customers' bikes, and some are our new bikes we sell. Um, this is a that's a customer's bike. Um, that's a, a 150 GY6. Uh, I don't know what we're doing to that, but they have different names. That like that's a Tao Tao. They're uh, not. Well, I gotta be careful what I say, but. Um, that's a 150G by six for that. If you want to stay reliable, do like a 171 NCY big bore kit. Um, four strokes are going to be harder to put together. There's more moving parts. You've got your valves, you have your timing chain, you have your camshaft. There's more moving parts, okay? And um, it's more labor intensive to build and work on. That being said, uh, they're, they're more lenient with mistakes. Like if your jetting is off one way or the other on a, on a four stroke, it's gonna run. It's still gonna run. On a carb four stroke, it's still gonna run. It's just not gonna run great. On a two stroke, if you're off on your jetting or you mess up something, that motor's spinning at you know, 10, 12, 13, 14,000 RPM. If you're off on your jetting, you're likely gonna seize your cylinder because on a two stroke, your fuel, your air, your fuel oil mixture is what is what obviously causes your combustion. It also lubricates and it cools your motor. So if you have that mixture off, you're gonna you're gonna run lean, which means you don't have enough fuel and it's gonna get hot and you're not gonna have lubrication for your cylinder. So two stroke versus four stroke. Four stroke, you have more room for error, um, but it's more labor intensive to put them together. Um, a two stroke, I can, I can, I, if I have the two stroke motor on a bench and I take the sh air shrouds off, it's literally four bolts to take the whole cylinder, piston rings, everything off, it's four bolts. It's really easy. Um, you need like a little pick to get the C-clips out. But if you're gonna do, one of these guys, um, you've got valves, you have your cam, you have your timing chain, you gotta make sure it's timed properly when you put it back together. Um, I had a two-stroke Dio, Honda Dio, where I cracked the exhaust flange because the exhaust wasn't, it wasn't good clearance on the bike. Rode it back to my shop. I took the cylinder off when it was still hot. I used like my wife's oven mitt when I, was, when I didn't have this shop here. Took it apart, put it back together within like 20 minutes and, and to, to make a ride fired it up, went on the ride, did perfect. So four, two strokes are gonna be much, much, much easier, um, much easier to work on, and they're gonna be uh, less parts and less labor intensive when you're working on them. That being said, you have less room for error when it comes to tuning. So um, <clears throat> those are the two most common four strokes or your GY6 bikes. There are some bikes like this. That's an Elite 250, but that's a really rare bike. Um, that's been kitted to a 290 uh, Melosi kit. It's got a cam, it has a full CVT. That's a really um, rare rare bike and there are some parts for it. But in general, that's um, not gonna be a commonly built bike. Let's see what else is over here. Um, that's another GY6 50cc variant or 50cc bike. That's an Elite 150. That's um, my spaceship bike that's for sale. Uh, those older elites are super cool. They're super reliable, but there are no parts for them. When I mean no parts, I mean no parts. There's nothing performance that you can do to those to my understanding. We've kind of looked into it, but I don't, I don't know if it's really worth the time and effort to, uh, to make performance parts for them. So you see a lot of those older elites out there like that. Um, they're neat bikes are great bikes, but they're not great for modifying. Uh, so next we'll move to two strokes. Okay. Well, actually, let me look at, let me go over here go to the uh, couple other four strokes we have over here bear with me um so one of the most other modified bikes most people know is the honda grom so this is uh i've got my grom here so this one is is not quite like done to the max but it's uh this guy has um this has the um the coso uh big bore kit the coso four valve head it has a cam um it has the uh what is that uh the kitico cover it has the clutch i mean this bike has pretty much everything it has an a racer um it has a handle pipe i think this made um again just on a kind of like a base 
auto tune, whatever. It was like 24 wheel horse or something. They come with eight. So it's a fun bike, but these things are, are really cool. They're really popular, but you can't sink some serious money into these. I mean, this is, this is not crazy. I mean, it has a ported head and everything, but this is not crazy by any means. These, some of these guys are spending, you know, six, $7,000 on these motors, which sounds crazy, but I will say they're actually faster than, um, than you would think when they're done up right. Um, this one doesn't really give me this. This is not my my bike of choice personally, uh, just because I like the slingshot effect of the two stroke. But this thing revs to like 13, 12, 5, 13,000 RPM. Um, but uh, that being said, uh, I will say these are expensive to build. But when people say, "Oh, it's so expensive, it's so expensive." If you want the best of the best in any industry, if you're into shifter carts, if you're into dirt bikes, if you're into street bikes, does RC cars, it doesn't matter. If you want the best of the best, you want to build to the max, it's expensive. I don't care what, what you ride. If, if it's a, a go-kart, whatever, if you, if you say, I want the best of the best, the fastest, you're not getting out of building a motor for less than several thousand dollars. So um, in the grand scheme of things, these are actually pretty cheap to build as far as bikes in general. Um, for example, you can have a you know thirty plus wheel horsepower Grom for you know you're probably going to have five or six thousand plus into the motor, and that's going to be one of the fastest Groms in the United States because I think there's maybe a handful that are making over over thirty wheel horse maybe I don't know maybe a dozen or something. That being said, if you went and had a Hayabusa or or, a, or six R or something and said I want the fastest six R, you're probably going to spend twenty five grand on a motor probably if you have somebody build it in all the parts. So. Grand scheme of things, these things are a lot of fun. They're cheap. If you came from the car world or the motorcycle world, you know these are not that expensive to build. If you haven't gone into that world of building turbo cars and whatever, where you pay you know eighteen hundred dollars for a tune and two grand for a clutch, these are cheap compared to building other things. Um, but a lot of people haven't ha haven't been in that um, world where they've built you know crotch rockets or whatever, and so they don't really understand. But these. All these scooters are really cheap to build in the grand scheme of things. So the Grom is fuel injected. Um, you can do anything from mild to wild with these. This is probably the, one of the most popular bikes right now. Um, everybody, most people already know about them. Um, we have Ed's Grom here. This guy got a, a high compression piston, cam, uh, MBS ported head. It's getting a pipe because the last one was lost in the mail. Um, and then he's getting the A-Racer as well. So this should be a fun little ripper and this is gonna be stock CC. So he kind of wanted to keep it as reliable as possible with still getting some power. So we did everything we could. Um, so just to give you an example, you can go, you can do anything from really, really mild to something that's gonna be a little bit more out there. So um, this is a fun bike. Uh, this is a really fun bike as well. And there's tons of carbon fiber stuff. I mean, there's tons for these bikes. So um, these are the probably the most commonly modified four strokes aside from the GY6. I'm trying to think if there's anything else in here that's a commonly modified four stroke. Um, Zoom 125 is one. Uh, if you want a Zoom 125, you want to keep it reliable, stay with a stock stroke crank. This is my Zoom 125, just so you know what they look like. This one has a twin cylinder two stroke in it, but, um, well, not in it right now. It's, it's I gotta build it when the cases are sent back. But um, this is what they look like, so you have an idea. These are killer bikes, they're awesome. They're really, really reliable, they're built well. Um, that being said, if you start going crazy and, and you start doing the big CC stuff on those, good luck. I have I don't see many survive that are uh, big strokers and whatnot. So those keep it drop in stock stroke and they'll run forever. They run really good. Um, so those are kind of the most commonly modified four strokes. So we'll go to the two strokes now. Um, we'll start with the uh, one of the most common Yamaha Zuma. This style is called the Bug Eye. This is the 2002-2011. Um, this is, this has, um, 49 CC two stroke. Uh, this is 49 CC two stroke front disc brake. The Zuma is a great bike. However, the one thing I don't like about them is the slope of the seat. It feels like somebody's giving you a wedgie, uh, with a winch from behind for me anyways, but maybe I'm taller. I don't know. It's angle of seat. They're really sloped down. So this is called the bug eye. This is the newer style two stroke. Um, uh, two stroke Zuma. And then, um, so these are probably one of the most modifiable. You can go in, you can do anything from do, you could go 45 miles an hour. You can do hundred miles an hour. It's speed is based on money with these bikes, whether it's a Grom, whether it's a Vespa, whether it's a bug eye. Ooh, we have somebody come in here. Who is it? I don't know. 
don't know who it is. Oh, hey, buddy. Do I need a sign for anything? Yeah. Do I need a sign? Nail. All right. Sweet. Thank you, sir. You too. It's creeping in here. Uh, anyways, so the bug guys is one of the probably most common ones here. Uh, guys modify them. They're a little bit heavier, a little bit bigger, but you can go water cooled. Um, these are rear drum bike. You can go big CC, 100 CC. I mean, there's tons of stuff you can do for these things. That's probably like the most modifiable one. Really good motors, really high quality. The bike's really good quality. They're on a little bit on the heavy side and bulky side. Um, but just so you know, this is a good one to pick. They are definitely a little bit harder to get to to get to speed because they are so heavy. Um, this is what ha this has what's called a horizontal Minarelli, which means your piston is going this way, horizontal. That's vertical. So we'll talk about horizontal versus vertical. Is that somebody does that in a music video or something? Anyways, those are good. They're big and heavy though. The older style Zumas, my favorite, are these. This is a Yamaha Zuma Pre Bug. This is um, 89 to 01. This motor. It's vertical, okay? These don't make as much power by any means. You don't, you're really limited. Well, no, you're, you're, you have less options, I should say, than the bug eye. But these things are awesome. They're small, they're lightweight. Um, they have big tires on them. I've taken these things off jumps and I mean, these things are incredibly stout. You don't have any seat storage. You don't have a glove box. Here comes Carter. Carter's cool kid today riding a, a KTM. Um, actually, I should show him that. If you guys want a smaller... Oh, hey, Carter. What? Live video time? It's not live. It's just a video. It's oh. talking about different bikes look and whatever. Look outside. It's beautiful. It's o'clock this morning. So this is the uh, RC Where's my 390. Well, yeah, I just want... I'm just talking about different bikes that are modifiable and whatever. It's a dumpster bike. It's just a dumpster bike, yeah. Those are cool bikes. Um... So yeah, this is the Yamaha Zuma vertical. There's tons of parts you can do to them. Um, new fairings are pretty cheap. They're front disc brake. These are my favorite. I'd say limited. I mean, they're kind of the max you're gonna get out of one of these. What, 70, 70s? Probably max out of a pre-bug, realistically. I think you can get 80 if you really try. If you really I've tried. I've taller gears in than what, the, the 1443? 1440, 1344. They just, they, they don't like top speed. No. It's not, even a, it, it's not a comfortable bike at top speed either. No. But these are great for wheelies and jumps and beating on, but they're getting more and more expensive. So this is my personal favorite bike here. Uh, mine's over there in the corner. Another bike is Honda Dio. This is a two stroke Honda vertical 49cc. They're get, they're, these didn't come in the US, but some people imported them. That's gonna be the same, same motors in 94 to 01 Elite for the most part. Um, they're really easy to go 50 miles an hour. They're super simple. You can do that 50 miles an hour for like $125. Um, you can get those things to 80, 90 miles an hour too. Tons and tons and tons of parts for those. They're extremely comfortable as well. So two strokes, that Honda Dio, this guy, and the Bug Eye are the most common. The Piaggio Typhoon is a really, really good bike, but they're really hard to find. Um, they're really modifiable as well, 49. So all the two strokes we're talking about are 49cc, really modifiable. Um, the other bike, which good luck finding, is a Derby GP1, that's Carter's bike. Um, that has a Melosi RC1 94cc motor in it. This is probably a, I don't know, 90, 95 mile an hour bike. He's gotten it to like 80 just in the block in front of the shop. Um, killer bikes, front and rear disc brake, liquid cooled, but very hard to find. Um, so Pia Piaggio, Honda, and Yamaha are kind of the three brands um, for modifying two strokes. There's uh, another, you'll see oddball stuff like this, like Eton. This is the Eton Beamer 49cc. There are clone bikes that use a lot of the same parts as say a Yamaha Zuma. Um, this is a very similar motor to Yamaha Zuma, but it's a clone motor. So it's not made in Japan or, or Italy. Um, that's gonna be made in uh, Taiwan. So How many bikes in here? The Eton's Taiwan or China? They're Taiwan. Taiwan, it's okay. Good. It's like, the motor's probably equivalent to like the Adley motors. Yeah. For quality and okay. everything. Yeah. Think, it's like Jog's transmission. Jog stuff. Think, I want to say, weren't the Etons, don't they have the weird exhaust that doesn't let you run the, the Minarelli angle. exhaust yeah. without running a Minarelli cylinder as yeah, well? Yeah, I think yeah. so. Although this one, got, this one has a... It's clean. Like a regular... Oh, no. That was a, That's that was a different one. Bike. 
So those, you'll run into those where people say they're Zoom, the Zuma motors, they're not. They're very similar, but they, they do have differences. Um, the Yamaha Vino is an awesome bike to build too. It's, it's a short case Minarelli. That's a horizontal motor, 49cc. Carter has one of those, loves it. They're really easy to get power out because they're really, really light. Um, Carter just has knobbies on it. It's his wheelie slash off-road bike somewhere. I'll show you guys. So here's this right here. That's his Vino. So, so kind of concludes, um, so two strokes are gonna be cheaper, I think, to get the horsepower out of. Um, they're gonna wear faster than a four stroke though, and they're gonna be easier to put together. Here he's got the Grom out in the light, finally. It's nice weather. Um, Trying to think of what else, there's another, there's another Dio there. There's another Yamaha Prebug. Looks like we have a lot of Dio's in here right now. So I'll also show you another one back here. This is Carter's uh, wheelie bike he's working on. Um, another DO, he put a, a sim headset on it. So those are killer for um, modifying a building. They are getting, they're hard to find because they didn't come here. And then the other, another two stroke is a Vespa, but I wouldn't buy, wouldn't. Don't, don't wouldn't. the color combination <laughs> on the DO. Right it's all right. It's a little funky. It's all right. Those so Chris's Vespa, this is a badass, badass two stroke. Um, this These is are a, awesome this to is, build. Yeah, this, this is, is a shifter bike. What do you, What was his top speed on this thing? Oh, it's like, I mean, what trail did he tech, say? So his confirmed best GPS is like 103. 103. Yeah, his trail tech starts to flicker a little bit, but GPS 103. GPS 103. So, so but these the 200s go like 65 stock, stock, and just a cylinder kit, like a little bit of a nicer pipe, and it's like they're they're awesome little yeah. bikes for sure. So, so they're definitely more com complex though. I mean, with your transmission and the way oh, they're put more together. Oh, like rebuilding a motorcycle engine. Yeah. As well as the, how the gear stack's going and everything yeah. too. Yeah. But this thing's absolutely This thing is a total monster. Oh. Um, Oh, sweet helmet. That's, dang, what? <laughs> Carter has the helmet fetish, I think. Yeah, high viz. <laughs> uh, so hopefully that that helps. Um, just kind of talk about modifying different bikes, like what to start with, you know, two-stroke versus four-stroke. Like and saying, but even like if you've never gotten a scooter before, like GY6 honestly is not a bad first scooter. Just to start. Just to yeah. start because it's cheap. The parts are pretty cheap. You can get parts for them like literally anywhere. So... That's what I, I was mean, saying. It's like almost you get one for almost like free yeah, if exactly. you like find if you one. Find, friend's got one yeah. or something. I mean, I we talk shit about GY6. It's all kind of fun and games. I started yeah. with GY6. It's, yeah, it's a good way to get into it for sure. Yeah, and it's much. It's like it's way easier to tune too. So if you're you know if you don't really know how to jet, so you have a lot is, more leeway yeah. in those bikes. There's less room for error on the two stroke. Yeah, you know. So um, yeah. So if that hopefully that helps. You guys have questions about bikes. Um, again, the one thing if you guys get a, a GY6. Um, not something like, like this, because this we can actually look up and get parts for, but if you buy something that's a, it's a laser, laser tau, turbo vision, 150 QXY L7-5, because that's, they see all this weird stuff on the side. Um, you can't, you can't look up an online diagram with parts. So you're just, it's a guessing game with getting parts. So that's one thing. That's one thing like body panels and headsets and stuff like that that you're gonna have a hard time getting with yeah. Chinese stuff. So. Motor stuff, no problem. Motor stuff, no problem. So. Well, and also get ready to be made fun of on Facebook all the time too. For GI sixes. <laughs> yeah, it's all in good fun. Though. Yeah, no, it's fun. Just that's the whole thing. You just have fun with these. So, hopefully, it helps um, explain two stroke, four stroke, kind of what bikes to start with. Um, Typically, the older the bike, the harder it's going to be to get parts for. So, like Aero 80s, Aero 125s, Hondas, Yamaha, Rivas, they're cool bikes. Don't get them to modify them um, because, well, actually, if you want to do it, just do it. But, but you're not going to find like, you know, all these parts we have up here, all these parts on the shelves. Um, these are all for Yamahas, Hondas, Piaggios, Groms. Um, there's really not going to be. I'm, you know, nobody's gonna have parts for your, for your Aero or for your Riva or something like that. So, again, if you're watching, subscribe, share, like. Um, we're gonna do a live video. We're gonna give something away um, today as well, which we do every Friday. Also, we have a new Scooter Swap Shop member of the company right here. Okay, we haven't named him yet, but um, this thing is only been here for a day and a half, and it looks like it came back from Afghanistan. Carter, what should we name this thing? Count Succula? Count Succula. <laughs> that's the... <laughs> Scooter Succula? <laughs> that's interesting. I wasn't expecting that. Okay. Well, I'm going to put him to work. Clean the shop. We're going to start him up here. And he's off. All right. 
have a good day. Um, again, subscribe, share this channel with your friends. If you guys have questions, uh, ask away. So ride safe and enjoy the weather if you have good weather like us.